All right, I am making a pizza. Got a gluten-free crust here. I've got one of these uh, pizza pizza deals that we got at the store. Can't remember what it's called. Anyway, crust. so hmm? crust. Yeah, but this one one of these pizza makers here that we got at the store. And I've got this gluten-free crust. I've been just leaving it open and uh, turning it every five minutes or so because it was a frozen pizza and I wanted the pizza, the moisture of it to go away because I want a crispy crust. So I've done that. So making a pizza at home, at home you guys, is like so easy, so easy. I know they all tell you that on TV. Oh, this is so easy and they lie, but this one really is because you can use leftovers. I've got leftover chicken here. Um, for Andrew's side of the pizza because he eats meat and I don't so um, his side will have some Leftover chicken on it. We've got some Sonoma gourmet butternut squash organic pasta sauce in other words, we've got some butternut squash stuff from, pop, from Costco And I'm gonna put on probably about a third of a cup or so Kind of splashing it on there so you can see it. Probably no more than a half a cup or so. Just using a tablespoon to smear it around. Not very Martha Stewart like, but that's the way we do things in real life. You can use your regular, and you can use any spaghetti sauce. It doesn't have to be pizza sauce. Um, pizza sauce simply has more, more spices and stuff in it. And that's another way to just sell you stuff, but you've probably got enough of the um, enough spices in your cabinet. Now, I put it on very lightly. So I, once again, I don't want the pizza crust to be um, to be soggy. I'm moving it out of the center, moving it towards the edges, but not too much towards the edges. The center tends to get really soggy. I found when I'm using gluten-free crust in that contraption that we have. So I'm gonna kind of push it off to the side. Now I add some spice. And you're following me over to this to the okay, here we go. Um, we've got some pepper. I like we like pepper flakes, simple little pe pepper flakes, and we use a simply organic um, with a with a grinder, it's called grind to a salt grind to a salt, it has, has salt in it, but it has other stuff as well. Mustard seed and all of that. So it adds some flavor. And then here comes the pepper flakes. Andrew will add even more to that afterwards, but that's the amount I like, so that way make it work for both. Next is cheese. So we're using uh, Costco Tillamook brick. sharp cheese. Yeah, from one of those, you know, the red brick. The black brick is great, that's extra, extra, um, extra sharp. sharp, yeah. So whatever you like. So now the thing is with the, um, with the yellow cheese, it, 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 it's a, got a, it, if it's a sharp cheese, it's got a really powerful taste to it. Um, if you add too much to it, it's going to be like all of these little other things that I'm going to be putting on here will get kind of lost in it. So what you do in that particular case is you you eat what you don't want to put on there. Okay, so I got the cheese on there. Mm, mm. This is what I did next. Super greens. I took a bunch of super greens right here into very fine pieces. Usually we put a little bit more like that. Hold on while I while I sneeze. Keep the moisture down because you're gonna put a soggy crust. Not always easy to do when you're making a pizza. Next, I have 
uh, taken um, butter and I have uh, sliced up and uh, fried some shiitake mushrooms. They taste like meat. They have this really satisfying meaty flavor. Mm. Kind of get enough of those, just can't. And then some regular old yellow onion. And I've been having it drain. Now, if I was taking, this is what I do when, when we use, when we make our ramen. We do that like once a week at least. We make ramen well, probably twice a week. Because Costco has a really good um, organic rice ramen. We do this very same thing in the same pot. I don't soak up <coughs> the um, butter for the ramen. I, I would just transfer this to the top of the ramen when it's done. But for pizza, I don't want it to be soggy once again. Take that off. All right, so now we have, what's the next thing's gonna go on? Let's close this up so it gets warmer. Yeah, okay, this will be the next thing I put on. All right, so on goes the mushrooms. This is super good. Even people who are like a little, man, I'm not so sure I'm a fan of mushrooms. Well, if you get shiitake mushrooms, they have a very sulfury, wonderful, yummy flavor to them. Um, like our, for example, our, um, we have friends who have, who like it, who don't like it. Our son-in-law's like, man, yeah, that's not a mushroom fan, but he, you know, if it's, if it's uh, cooked in mushroom, in, um, in butter, he tends to like it. All right, next, I have some uh, pico de gallo. <laughs> what is this? Is this one of my gray hairs? Or, no, it's not. It's just part of the cilantro, okay. So I'm gonna use, I've used, I've got this, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna squeeze it a little more, I'm gonna get more of the moisture out. I've already had it sitting on a napkin. But still, look, I'm getting more moisture. Once again, you want to have as little moisture as possible transferred to your pizza. Okay. And I'm going to take this, the um, pico de gallo, and we've added more cilantro. This is a, this is a store-bought pico de gallo. We do a lot of shopping at um, PCC, which is our local organic consumer co-op grocery store. All right, so I've got that out. Still, I don't have a whole lot going on in the center. And then Andrew, of course, wants his chicken. So let's go ahead and let's put that up aside. Although, Andrew doesn't always eat as much meat as he used to. And I guess that's the, what happens when you are living with a vegetarian, right, Andrew? Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so sorry for you. <laughs> Not really. Okay, and then lastly, I am putting on some sliced mozzarella. Now, this is, uh, once again, I got a piece of seed. You, you know, you don't have to get it there. Um, it's just regular mozzarella. Maybe American is Bel... I don't know how to pronounce this. Belgiosio. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's high moisture. So this is gonna cause some moisture to hang out on the top of the pizza. And I will go in there halfway through and take a, um, <laughs> all right, follow me over here. Uh, a paper towel will work, a napkin will work, but I use what's more absorbent and less expensive. I got this toilet, pole, toilet paper roll thing here in the, in the kitchen and when I'm cooking the pizza I will take this I'll, I'll open it up halfway and if I see a big area of liquid I'll just kind of set that in there like that and I'll set it off to the side so anyway back to the mozzarella I'll set that out here notice I'm not putting any in the center at all okay honey did I forget anything Nope. Clean the stuff from the edges so it doesn't leak over. Right. So we'll do that. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the super cool pizza cooker that we have, which is 
really is the bomb. We don't want the dinner detector going off, so and on it goes. Now I will cook that. I'll set the timer for nine minutes. And at nine minutes, I will open it up and take a peek. But of course, you know I'm going to take a peek at about seven. Um, check for any liquid that's on the top. Absorb it in this with, the, with some paper. And we will have a, a delicious, pretty much organic pizza for dinner. Um, and we don't have to call out for it. We can empty our refrigerator of of any of the leftovers. I mean, you open your fridge, you got leftover vegetables here, leftover meat there. Too, it doesn't have to just be cheese and tomato and mushrooms. It can be whatever you want it to be. It's good. It's nice and crispy. Everything on top looks pretty good. I'm gonna put it down for another minute. And then I'm going to just leave it, I'm going to cook it and leave it open like this so that more moisture escapes. First, I'm going to put it under here. You see, that's pretty, pretty solid. And then for my favorite knives, I like to use a regular flat knife for cutting all of my vegetables and other things. But for cutting uh, the pizza itself, I use a knife that has a um, has a curve to it, so that the psi is exactly where I have it, rather than dispersed across the bottom. First, I'm going to start with cutting Andrew's side that has the chicken. You see, you come right down like this. That's why you have those pizza wheels. That's why they're wheels. Listen to that nice crunch. Andrew, you're going to get bigger pieces today because you've got a lot of the chicken covering most of it, which is fine. Okay. Good cut. Gluten-free, folks. Those of you who are eating gluten-free. Pizza is not off the menu for you. This has taken some trial and error after we have uh, after we bought the pizza machine. You know, we learned we ended up lots of soggy pizzas is what we ended up with. So the trial and error. Um, has led us some really to some really beautiful, nice, crunchy, crunchy, crunchy pizzas. Look at that! Nice, crunchy, beautiful, gluten-free pizza with your organic ingredients. And here you go.